Hello everyone, and this is my review for WWE SmackDown Live on April the 11th, 2017. Um, and again, this is the second portion of the whole Superstar Shakeup. So they uh, continued it on, and again, I feel like they just... The, even though they don't explain it as such, it feels like that this was just more than likely a trade of some kind. It's not like a draft or anything to go along with it. Uh, so, they start off the show just like they did the night before where they brought out people that were immediate, uh, you know, they immediately brought out people who were going to be a part of the Superstar Shakeup who came from Raw over the SmackDown. And they started off the show with, well, you guessed it probably, Kevin Owens because the Intercontinental title's on Raw now. The US title's going to be on SmackDown now. So Kevin Owens comes out Cuts a promo basically saying, welcome to the new Kevin Owens show, and that's what SmackDown is going to be now. Uh, call, uh, con he's continually calling himself the new face of America, running down everybody, everything in that sense. Kind of the typical, typical heel stuff, but from Kevin Owens, it comes off more natural for some odd reason. It just feels like, oh, this doesn't seem like it's just the typical shtick. It's just a... Uh, it's Kevin. O it's the way Kevin Owens, I guess, delivers everything and everything uh, on that sense of it. Uh, he does get interrupted by Baron Corbin, who basically comes out and says, "Yo, I beat the Intercontinental Champion last week, and he beat you last night to the point that you have to come over here, and I beat him and chased him off to Raw, so I won a title shot." And lo and behold, he gets interrupted by the second person who's coming over to SmackDown, uh, coming over to SmackDown to, uh, from Raw, which was Sami Zayn. Uh, Sami Zayn interrupts, cuts a quick promo, talking about wanting to be with the, trying to get everything going with the land of opportunity that SmackDown is, everything in that sense. And he was interrupted rather quickly by AJ Styles, uh, who, of course... You know, he continues going off the whole aspect of he's the one who built SmackDown Live uh, and he deserves the opportunity and everything to go along with it. This does eventually bring out Daniel Bryan, who says that because of the Jericho Owens match at Payback, the winner of that match will get the roster spot uh, on SmackDown. So basically, it's like that's the, the whole thing about that is that regardless of who wins, SmackDown's going to have the Intercontinent or. Not the Intercontinental title, but the uh, the United States title. So I, I actually kind of like the aspect that they explain something like that. It's like, oh, well, now you have a Raw guy and a SmackDown guy going after the U.S. title. What ends up happening? Well, no, if Jericho wins, he comes to SmackDown. Uh, and he also makes a number one uh, a number one contenders match uh, for that night with Sami Zayn, AJ Styles, and Baron Corbin in a triple threat um, to determine who would face the winner of that match somewhere down the line. Uh, good segment. Uh, I like the aspect of Kevin Owens coming out, establishing himself really quickly, and getting, like, the crowd was really behind him initially, but uh, really quickly turned it around uh, to, go along, uh, to go along with it, and then having Sammy come out as part of the Superstar shakeup and everything in that sense uh, was not a bad way of going. The stuff from Daniel Bryan, they kind of kept the continuity on it, explaining what would happen with the Jericho Owens match uh, if Jericho won to go along with it, I thought was a good way of going as well. Up next was Eric Rowan going up against Randy Orton. So guess what? Eric Rowan showed up last week. He's back with Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt's on Raw now. Eric Rowan's staying on SmackDown. Guess what? You've been split up again. And it looked like this match was just going the typical squash match way of everything. And Bray does interrupt Randy Orton, talking about the House of Horrors match and everything in that, that sense. This does eventually lead to Orton still winning the match by DQ, but getting laid out by Eric Rowan afterwards. So Eric Rowan gets to stand tall, at least for a little bit here, uh, in that sense of it. After the distraction, he lays him out with the full Nelson slam after hitting him with a set of stairs. And kind of, that's kind of how it was. That's all it ended up being. Uh, up next, um, actually, no, there isn't really much more to talk about that, because, like I said, you know, Bray Wyatt's being on Raw now, and the whole aspect of them having the match at Payback, 
to go along with it. Uh, it was still, like, they still haven't really said much more about the House of Horrors match and like what it's supposed to be and everything. Is it going to be something that's going to be like the final deletion or uh, something that's actually in the ring or something in that sense? It's still intriguing. And if they develop it more than what they did with the whole match at WrestleMania, I feel like it could be good uh, in that sense of it. But th that storyline, especially with the way that the WrestleMania match went, it had something unique to it, but the match itself overall was just boring. And it had the little dressing put on, on there with the whole aspect of the projector and everything to go along with it. So I'm interested to see what they're going to do with the House of Horrors, but the storyline's not really doing much for me anymore. So we'll see where they uh, what they do building it up into that uh, into that match that will happen at Payback now instead of happening happening probably at what uh, whatever the uh, SmackDown pay per view would have ended up being in May uh, for. It. So we'll see how that ends up playing off. Up next was the Usos versus American Alpha. Again, these two put on a good match. The Usos go over in the end, but they have some good spots in there. I really liked uh, one of the areas where it seemed like the Usos were going back to old a little bit, and they were going to do this, uh, the uh, you know dueling dives out to the ring. And as they do that, they get caught by the American Alpha and get belly-to-belly uh, -belly suplexed by both of them. I thought the match was great uh, in in that sense of everything. Like they. You know, each team was coming up with a counter for every other thing. And it looked like American Alpha was going to go for Grand Amplitude, but um, it caught, like, one of the Usos super kicked Jason Jordan, which got him out of there. Like, a blind tag was made, which allowed the Usos in the end to kind of garner the victory with a super kick big splash combo uh, just good stuff throughout the entire match happening here I, re I do actually recommend watching this one uh, though they have not built up American Alpha much in the terms of promo wise they have a kind especially these matches with the Usos they have let them kind of you know go a little bit with everything on this one but after the match the Shining Stars showed up and they attacked the American Alpha. Well, they didn't call them the Shining Stars by any stretch of the imagination. That's just how we know Epico and Primo as of late. They do refer to them as Epico and Primo, but so maybe they're dropping the whole gimmick because they came out looking more vicious this week than they are on this show than what they typically have been doing. So maybe they're going to change them up a little bit and not call them that. We'll see where they go with everything. Up next was Mojo Rawley and their new and SmackDown's newest acquisition, Jinder Mahal. And Jinder Mahal is well still being treated like a jobber in that in, in that sense of everything. Uh, the whole aspect behind this match, uh, you know, get Mojo over. You had uh, Rob Gronkowski there again. The match was fine. And Rob Gronkowski gets in, involved again, throwing a beer into Jinder Mahal's face, allowing Mojo Rawley to end up getting the victory. Uh, not much to really say about this match other than Mojo is kind of, he is getting over with the crowd. Uh, I think it helps with the Rob Gronkowski thing being there uh, as well, especially with the aspect of them being in Boston to go along with it. So um, we'll see how everything ends out, ends out going if they continue on with uh, this whole thing about Mojo Raleigh and Jinder Mahal down the line, or what? Like, what will be Mojo's next program? Because really, he's not doing much of anything other than just like, okay, here's a match, here's a match, here's a match. He's not in a real program with anything. Like, you have subtle story, like small amount of story because of the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal with these two, but this feels like this is also like a, a blow off for everything to go along with it. So up next was Shane McMahon coming out. And the whole aspect was to address everything with the women's division. He talks about, um, he brings out Naomi, um, Natalia, Carmella, and Becky Lynch. And event is like he was talking about like how everything is going. He congratulates Naomi on winning the title. 
uh, at WrestleMania. Ellsworth grabs the mic and cuts a promo saying, no one watches for Naomi. She's a horrible champion. They only watch for Carmella and Car and Carmelsworth uh, to go along with it. Uh, which Naomi immediately puts him in his place. Uh, I, it was a, it was a pretty fun, it was a pretty funny comment uh, from Naomi. And then she's like, "Sorry about that, Shane. Please tell us who's gonna be on SmackDown now." And just gives it back to him. <laughs> gives him back the microphone. Not, not too bad stuff there. I liked what they did uh, with everything in that sense. Like you have Ellsworth like run down Naomi as being a bad champion but then Naomi just puts Ellsworth in his place to go along with it uh some pretty good stuff on that side uh Shane starts hyping up everything saying that this is a second generation superstar a great athlete her father's a hall of famer and everything so everyone's like thinking okay it's Charlotte it's Charlotte it's Charlotte and he brings out Tamina uh, so the crowd seems a little bit disappointed on the aspect of, okay, it's Tamina, though Tamina's not bad in her own right. She doesn't really say anything. Shane seems like he's going to go to leave, but then comes back. And it's like, you know what? You guys seem to be thinking I was talking about someone else as the We Want Sasha chance start, because they're in Boston, uh, to go along with it. Um, they're, uh, <clears throat> sorry, stumbling over my words again. I seem to do that in most of these videos now. I seem to stumble over my words at some point in time. Um, but he is like, you know what? Here you go. Someone else who's joining the SmackDown Live women's division, and he brings out Charlotte. Uh, and, of course, that got a pretty big cheer, lots of woos, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and, again, not much really being said on all sides. It's, it's more just an introduction. It's like, who's going to be over here on SmackDown? And they bring out Tamina, and they bring out Charlotte to go along with everything. And you see this, uh, you also end up seeing this one throughout most of the night as well. Um, since they don't have as much time as Raw does, you saw more graphics than anything about, like, people who were coming over. So, like, right after this one, they also, like, when they come back from commercial break, it's like, oh, here's going to be a couple other people who are coming over from um, the Superstar Shake-Up. You had Sin Cara and Rusev. Rusev, obviously, because... Uh, Rusev couldn't be there because, obviously, he... Well, not maybe obviously to everybody, but he had been injured right before WrestleMania, so he's not really showing up on, on uh, any shows at this point in time. Uh, and, of course, Sin Cara, they show in there. They put him over as, like, high-flying and everything to go along with that. Uh, also, people that they they showed that were coming over the wall, but they put they, um, put them as coming soon instead of anything else, which ended up being Lana, which she seems to be kind of doing a thing that's going to be away from Rusev. Because... It, it, it felt like maybe the whole like the whole thing with Emma Lena uh, and Emma not necessarily fully going with that, it might be getting put on Lana. And she's going to be on SmackDown to go along with it. And I mean, it'll be interesting to see where they go with it because she kind of does this little, uh, little dance while sitting on the ramp or like sitting in a chair on the rampway or something in, in that sense. But she was in like this evening, not evening gown, but like this uh, dancing uh, dancer's dress or something to go along with that. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what they decide to do with Lana there. And is she going to be dropping the whole ravish, uh, ravishing Russian thing to go along with it? Because like she's been doing that ever since she came up. It'll be a little bit weird if they just have her drop the accent to go along with it. I know um, if you had watched... Uh, I know there if people watch Total Divas, which I don't really end up doing, but apparently she doesn't use the accent at all on that show uh, to go along with it. So some people would end up not being too weirded out by that. But uh, again, like she's kind of been doing the whole ravishing Russian thing the whole time. So it'll be interesting to see if they keep the accent on her. And they also showed a graphic for coming soon, right? and they hype it up a little bit more as the New Day is coming over to SmackDown. And they mark them as coming soon. More than likely, they're going to wait until Kofi can come back uh, from his ankle surgery uh, because that was actually something that did legit happen. I guess that was the way to write him off for a little bit was uh, to have, to have um, the Revival break his ankle uh, in, in that sense. So... Uh, 
So you'll have the New Day coming over to SmackDown, they ha- and they hype it up, and you have Byron Saxton doing his typical thing, Well, but which, by the way, Byron Saxton is now on the commentary team for SmackDown, and David Otunga is going to be on Raw now to go along with it, in which they announced that like right after Raw or something, something in that sense. But those are the people that are going to be coming over on the Superstar Shake-Up side. Um, and again, uh, again, the whole aspect of the Superstar Shake-Up this week, I, uh, I think it helped both shows. Um, otherwise, I felt like both of these shows were kind of ho-hum other than that. other than that, Though with SmackDown side, you got some decent matches. You got some really good matches in there. I like the tag team title match and, and everything in that sense. You also got what was... Uh, <clears throat> Well, before I talk about the Dolph Ziggler thing, what they had next, you had Aiden English in the ring. He cuts a promo about, you know, he doesn't have his tag team partner anymore, and the spotlight's going to only be on him as he goes, <clears throat> and the spotlight shines on him real quick. And he begins doing the singing gimmick that he did in NXT. Please let him continue this. I like that stuff that he did down in NXT with it. Um... And as he was uh, as he was singing, he gets interrupted by Ty Dillinger because they were about to have a match. Uh, so Ty Dillinger comes down. This kind of became a squash match again. They're kind of putting over Ty Dillinger uh, as he comes up and everything in that sense. But again, please let Aiden English keep up with the singing gimmick. It would be great. At least I think it would be great uh, to go along with it. Uh, so we'll see if that, that is something that they continue on doing and if they actually have Aiden English go over in some matches down the road here. Otherwise, like I said, Ty Dillinger wins this match and what was a relative squash match and they're kind of getting the whole 10 chant over in the terms of it being with Ty Dillinger more than just when, um, more than just when the, um, Referee was doing the count, uh, the count out, and everybody was doing tens all the time. Which I love the fact that the commentators make reference to is that the crowd had been uh, trying to confuse the fans with ten chance because of Ty Dillinger, you know, like with the whole the whole aspect of trying to get Ty Dillinger up on the main roster and everything in that sense. When they come back from commercial break, you have Dolph Ziggler in the ring. He cuts a promo about staying on SmackDown and how he's going to do what he always has done and that's steal the show and everything in that sense. And he gets interrupted by Shinsuke Nakamura. Now this happened as a, a part of a dark, a dark um, like a commercial thing that they had done for um, last week which set up a dark match between the two of them. Now it seems like they're going to be doing some actual, um, actual program with them. Uh, because he basically co- he comes out there, doesn't really say much of anything, just kind of does his normal charismatic co- type of look and everything in that sense. Uh, Dolph Ziggler's like, who are you anyway? Like, I don't know who you are. And Nakamura introduces himself. Dolph uh, kind of like just does that whole, okay, okay. And then goes to leave, tries to attack Shinsuke Nakamura with a... Um, with a super kick, of course, the crowd is chanting Nakamura the entire time to go along with it. Uh, and Nakamura catches him, throws him down, does the little come on bit that he usually does. And that's how the segment ends out ending. Now, I think it got announced that they also had another dark match uh, on SmackDown after 205 Live uh, to go along with it. So, uh, we expect I expect to see some kind of program between Dolph Ziggler and... No, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura as like Nakamura's first like feud coming in or or something in that sense like his first match. Uh, so this brings us to the main event of the night, which was AJ Styles versus Sami Zayn versus Baron Corbin in that triple threat match. And you know I like this match. It was a really really good triple threat, and all three guys got to look good at some point in time. Like they had it. Uh, kind of like with that triple threat match with Dolph Ziggler and Baron Corbin and AJ Styles for the WWE title, where Baron Corbin does dominate for a good chunk of time. He lo- like he looks really good in the match, looks really dominant, and then both sides like AJ Styles eventually takes over. Sami Zayn takes over for a little bit as well in there. Uh, I just thought this was a great overall match. The ending to the match itself. 
Uh, you had Sami Zayn give the Huluva kick to Baron Corbin to get rid of him, and th- but he turns into the phenomenal forearm for AJ Styles to go over in the match and become the number one contender for the United States title. So guess what? We get to see AJ Styles versus Kevin Owens. I'm actually really happy. <laughs> I'm actually really happy for that one. I want to see that match, and it's glad that I'm glad we get to uh, kind of see that one. Uh, because I'm not sure they they might have done one when um, they might have done a match while AJ Styles was face initially, but this is kind of going to be that way of turning AJ Styles back into a baby face again, is having him go up against Kevin Owens, and I think that's going to be a good way of going. I would have loved to have seen Sami Zayn uh, going over, but um, how many times have we seen Zayn and Owens? And don't get me wrong, each and every one of their matches are good. You just don't want to overkill it, which WWE kind of has overkilled it already uh, to go along uh, along with that. And hopefully we see Sami Zayn uh, go over a little bit uh, more in this one. Again, like I said, everybody looked good in this match. Like everybody had their point of control, getting everything in. uh, And you had some good stuff, uh, good stuff in there where you're like, you had a spot in there as well where like Baron Corbin hit, like does like a heavy forearm to Sami Zayn, which uh, like knocks him a little bit loopy. But then you get a big boot from Sami Zayn to both Baron Corbin to get get rid of him for a moment, and then to AJ Styles, which he in return does a Pele kick to uh, to Sami Zayn afterwards. Uh, you had some really good spots in there. This is a good match. Uh, this is a really good match. Uh, recommended to go see. Like you have two matches I would recommend going seeing, which was the Usos and American Alpha. And it, the triple threat match as well. Uh, I thought SmackDown was good this week. Again, it kind of falls on the aspect of the superstar shakeup. Kind of helped these two shows out this week. And we'll see where they go along with everything. Otherwise, I felt like these shows would have been more... They would have been more average than anything with both Raw and SmackDown this week. But the whole aspect of the superstar shakeup in the end does kind of help all of the uh, help all those things to go along with it. So, with that being said, that is my review this week for WWE SmackDown. I thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a great day.